Let me put a couple things in perspective for you Respect the black culture, but I don't gotta rep it for you And hip-hop ain't a black thing, I got a lesson for you Latino b-boys in the Bronx laid the foundation for you Hip-hop always been about saving the black and brown Gave a new meaning to seeing bodies hit the ground Gave a new meaning to homie out here getting down Head spinning, now your head spinning, how that sound? So before... This was the first rap song ever recorded. The song Noah by the church choir group The Jubilaires is known as the first rap song in history, recorded in 1940. And Jamaicans invented hip hop. Understand. This whole hip hop shit was birthed from Jamaica. Like, Kool Herc is a Jamaican nigga. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The whole concept of having big ass speakers stockpiled on top of each other and playing loud ass music outside, that come from Jamaica. That's dancehall culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, Kool Herc brought dancehall culture to the US and gave birth to hip hop culture. The only thing that changed was the type of music that was played. And how it was played, <clears throat> but the concept is the same. I'm not sure if if a dead live stream was a direct response to Fat Joe and Busta Rhymes, right? Yeah. But you know, there's been this whole debate recently regarding the origins of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Now, Fat Joe came out and he recently said that Latinos you know, in the Bronx had had 50-50 hand in creating hip-hop. Even Busta Rhymes said hip-hop was created by Puerto Ricans and Blacks. Mm -hmm. So what are your take? Why are people trying to lay claim to hip-hop? Right. Um, that claim Fat Joe is making is absolutely false. Blacks and Latinos did not create 50-50 hip-hop. It wasn't equal at all. Not only that, because Busta Rhyme, he went out, he's going around here saying, well, Hip hop started in Jamaica and Jamaicans brought hip hop to black people here in America. That's a damn lie, too. Not only is that a lie, there is no, there are zero influences from Caribbean culture on hip hop's creation. <laughs> it's all over social media right now. You're one of the originators. Again, if we not getting that out, this man is one of the originators of hip hop. I grew up on Run DMC. They was probably like one of the first rap groups I've ever listened to. He was like in pictures with them. So this is such an honor thanks to Math Hoffa. Mm -hmm. Now, with that said, it's something going on on social media, and I'm sure you are aware of it with Fat Joe. And you would be one of the best people to answer this in the room because you were one of the people that was there. Fat Joe have said Latinos started hip-hop 50-50 with black, black people. Black people. Black people? Yeah. I agree with it. Mm. Okay. I agree with it. Okay. So, I agree with Fat Joe. No. You know why? I'm going to tell you something. He's been yeah. with us forever, mm -hmm. day one. I used to sit down and, and listen to his records like, yo, what was this dude doing back then, man? What, what was he on? He was on a whole new planet, man. And to take what he did then, that was like the, the, the beginning of hip hop, man. The vibe that he came on, the, 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 the beats, the, the horns loud, the dancing, the screaming, you know what I mean? The, it, it, it became swagger, you know what I mean? We, we, we took what he was doing and it became swagger to, to, to the point where somebody could take that and use it somewhere else, you know what I mean? As far as what James Brown brought to the game, you know, if he was a basketball player or, you know what I mean, we took it and bought it in the rap, you know what I mean? You know, James finished doing what he doing, get his man come out, throw the cape over on top of him. That was gangster right there, man, you know what I mean? So, you know, he, he meant so much, man, we didn't really understand until he was gone. Mm -hmm. 
Lawrence Ruby here since day one. It's an obvious answer, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, say it's beautiful. You know, there's more, there's even more than this right here. I'm just glad that we get this money together, you know what I mean? But it's important, especially because it's too cold to top of that. And we're showing, we're not only showing Latino um, unity, we're showing East West Coast unity, which is important, you know what I'm saying? Because that's, I, I can't see myself beefing with the West Coast and then um, Cypress want to do a song with me. That's Latino first, that's more important than East West. That's Familia, that's, 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 that's Raza, you know what I'm saying? So it all sounds petty when you bring it down to that. Into, uh, did you start rapping Ruby D? Late 76, early 77. Oh, yeah. 76, 77. Mm -hmm. Shot late the to the game, right? Yeah, they're kind of late to the game, So, huh? so, if so how did you create the hip hop? Of if you got there late. And y'all is the first Puerto Ricans, that means that <laughs> hip hop was going for at least three years before. Um, the first Puerto Ricans before, started yeah, even trying to rap. So what are you talking about y'all creating? Pop soil, correct? And 73 ain't correct. even when it started. Okay. This is gonna, 1978. Let's yeah, go. What, what year? Did you get in? But it still does not negate the history of the history culture the and history. the history of how it started. You fucking liar. Fat Joe, you a piece of shit. Fuck 50, you. Bro. You Latinos just gonna lie. Latinos weren't involved in hip-hop directly that that much in the early days of hip hop. They were one or two. It's the Panamanians, the, 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 like they out. The, the Mexicans. Big, Mexicans, everybody. It's crazy. We out here. Big time. Uh, this and was... the Mexicans, the Mexicans going to be the biggest. The biggest, when they get together and they figure out their Eminem of Mexicans, that's fly and spit, it's <laughs> over. No, nah. nah, it's over. The they, Mexican they, Eminem. Somebody gonna come. Well, if you're out be there, dumb if you're nice. out there, you Black know. Black people gonna love him. Spanish people gonna love him. White people gonna love him. And he gonna be the biggest guy in the world. Because there's so many Mexicans yeah. everywhere you look. Like, it's like, they get one to go. Like, go. Like, you know. A like big go. boy? Oh no, he gone. Like a Mexican Eminem. Yeah, he a hundred million, two hundred million, some shit we ain't never. <laughs> excuse my language, something we ain't never seen in our lives. He's gone. Amazing. Yeah. I said a hip hop, the hip it, the hip it, the hip hip hop, you don't stop the rocket to the bang, man. Brakes in the bus, brakes on the car, brakes to make you a superstar. He's so filled by heartbeat, with a treacherous three, we got a new heartbeat. Broken glass everywhere, people pissing on the stage, you know they just don't care. But it's like that, and that's the way it is. I want to rock y'all, that's all you need to know. I need a beat. Jacks like a nag, I don't know how it started. I used to let the mic smoke. Straight out of Compton, crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube. Make everybody see, in order to fight, fight the powers that be. My music hits me so hard, makes me say, oh my lord. Staring at a nigga, I'm paranoid, sleeping with my finger on the trigger. Just waking up in the morning, gotta thank God. I grew up on the crime side, the New York Times side. It was all a dream, I used to read Word Up magazine. I got you stuck off the realness. And you know when you win, there's always a f some people that hate. There's some people that hate. You know, I tell you, I never really f with Twitter, but I go on there to see. They always hating on me. And they said, they've been like lately talking about Latinos, wasn't it rap and this and this. These guys are f***ing illusion. We're from the Bronx, New York, shit happens. And so when hip-hop started, it's Latino and black, half and half. But they going at me because I'm like the only Spanish dude like really with a big voice. Dad, and Latinos wasn't there. You was invited. You are a, a specimen. You, I don't know what the fuck is up with these people that don't know their facts. And so out of nowhere this morning, somebody sent it to Tony Sunshine. He sent it to me. I got a little video. I posted. And there's only a few Latinos in hip hop. And we got the, the drum beat going. And this talks about Charlie Chase and Ruby D and Whippy Whip and this. These are all. And so what I notice is history is history.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me get a one in the chat if you can hear me loud, crisp, and clear, and we'll go ahead and get this party started. If you're watching this stream, you've probably heard the controversy as of late. You've heard the very uh, polarizing opinion of one Fat Joe. It's every element of hip hop. It was, it was, it was, it was fifty-fifty, bro. If you look at the pictures, just go see the pictures. Mm -hmm. You'll see it. I mean, there's still a good bunch still riding off of the culture and still here i'm still present but why do you think it is not there's not more 50 50 he says he had the nerve to say 50 50 guys as a foundational black american i never once thought in my life that it was even a question i never thought it was even up for debate as to who the originators of hip-hop culture hip-hop period was the the originators were, were clearly us yet we've now got these tethers we've now got these latinos if you will trying to tether themselves to our success now that it's reached its peak of course now that it's the most popular now that we have such an influx of tethers in general i mean they said that there was three hundred thousand illegal immigrants that crossed the border just last month so man oh man now that they are strong in numbers they talk in real real reckless and jamaicans invented really hip-hop Damn, this whole hip hop shit was birthed from Jamaica. Like, Cool Herc is a Jamaican nigga. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The whole concept of having big ass speakers stockpiled on top of each other and playing loud ass music outside. That come from Jamaica. That's dance. Don't worry. Later on in the stream, we're going to hear from Cool Herc himself. But guys, this is real, real strange. All of a sudden, we got these Mexicans. We got these Latinos trying to claim that they had some kind of role in creating. Not that they were the first students. Not that they, you know, were the first ones to adopt the culture and the lifestyle. But that they had a hand in creating. Let me put a couple things in perspective for you. Respect the black culture, but I don't got to rep it for you. And hip hop ain't a black thing. I got a lesson for you. Latino B-Boys in the Bronx laid the foundation for you. Wow, 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 wow. So uh, they, they say in one breath that they don't have to rep the Black culture for us, but then they're going to try to take our culture and claim that hip-hop isn't a Black thing. What the hell are these Mexicans smoking? They, they, they smoke in that Mexican dirt weed still in the year 2024. Um, I, I'm not sure if, if they've got a lace with the fentanyl or something, but what did that Mexican boy say? Let me put a couple things in perspective for you. Respect the black culture, but I don't got a rep it for you. And hip hop ain't a black thing. I got a lesson for you. Latino B-boys in the Bronx laid the foundation for you. Hip hop always been about saving the black and brown. Gave a new meaning to seeing bodies hit the ground. Gave a new meaning to homie out here getting down. And I think it's also hypocritical that he uses the music video that Tyga did where Tyga did a Mexican themed rap song and the Mexican culture came out and shamed him for it and made him delete the music video but he's going to try to use that in his his expose of Mexicans really claim oh my god oh my god this will make no fucking sense y'all this will make no fucking sense I didn't realize this was even something that was up for debate when you can go back to the 30s to the 40s and see that we had a hand in our own culture in our own thing that we call hip-hop this was the first rap song ever recorded the song noah by the church choir group the jubilaires is known as the first rap song in history recorded in 1940 but they want us to think that it's even a topic of discussion, that it's even a debate as to who started what. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is literally the definition of tethers. This is what tethers do. They tether themselves to us, our culture, whether or not we're going to get reparations, whether or not they created hip hop. Come on, y'all. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. But thankfully, we've got a very vocal figure by the name of Tariq Nashik, who's really standing toe to toe on the front lines, letting these Latinas no, y'all ain't crazy shit. I'm sure if if a dead live stream was a direct response to Fat Joe and Busta Rhymes, right? Yeah. But you know, there's been this whole debate recently regarding the origins of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Now, Fat Joe came out and he recently said that Latinos, you know, in, in the Bronx had had 50 50 hand in creating hip hop. Even Busta Rhymes said hip hop was created by Puerto Ricans and blacks. Mm -hmm. So what are your take? Why are people trying to lay claim to hip hop? Right. Um, that claim Fat Joe is making is absolutely false. Blacks and Latinos did not create 50-50 hip hop. It wasn't equal at all. Not only that, because Busta Rhyme, he went out, he's going around here saying, well, 
hip hop started in Jamaica and Jamaicans brought hip hop to black people here in America. That's a damn lie too. Not only is that a lie, there is no, there are zero influences from Caribbean culture on hip hop's creation. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Make it make sense. And we've got Buster Rhymes tethering himself to the discussion as well. So let's hear the bombastic things that Buster has to say as he's been cosplaying as a foundational Black American since time immemorial. I didn't even know he was Caribbean. Is it, it, what about him speaks to being Caribbean? What, what part of his music, what part of anything? I mean, I thought he was one of us because he's been cosplaying as one of us since the goddamn 90s. But let's get into it. As people of the Caribbean and of the tropics, I think that it's just a, it's, it's something you can't really define in words. It's a it's a feeling thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you watch Latinos do the South Side of Merengue and you see Jamaican people, you know, do they shit. It's kind of like something that goes hand in hand. And, you know, it ain't a coincidence that in every urban community, the Latino and Blacks is there together. That ain't no accident. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's, it's not that like... No, it's not an accident. It's called redlining. It's called limited resources. It's called being forced into ghettos. What, what the hell is he talking about? It's some miraculous spiritual thing that we're in the same neighborhoods? Shout out to the people on the East Coast who know how racist them fucking Latinos and Dominicans are in New York City running around and saying nigga more than you or I. Racist and xenophobic as hell, but because we live in close proximity, we, we're supposed to be one with the Latinos. Like, you find in every urban community, you know... Middle Eastern and black or Asian and black, you know, you always see Latino and black. And I think we just so a part of each other's cultural significance, not only as tropical people, but even here in the United States, where the, the multiculture, because the U.S. ain't got no culture. They shit is all our shit. A bunch of our shit is what makes the U.S whatever you want to call it. We still don't know what that culture is for the U.S., but it's a mix-up of all of our cultures in, in the urban community. You know, the Latino and the West Indian has the greatest influence and we've always had and we'll always will and it's just Damn, been Damn, I don't know what he's smoking. I don't know why he's trying to overstate uh, the, the Caribbean and Latina um, contributions to American culture. Not just hip-hop, but he's saying American culture by and large. What? What? Foundational Black American culture is mimicked and distributed worldwide. People trying to be like us worldwide, and they trying to say that the Latinas and the Caribbean, the, the Caribbeans got to pop into where they're influencing American culture like that. I mean, I don't see it. Maybe in the borough he's from, but I don't see it. Anyway, so I've actually been influenced by the Latino community, which allows me to feel that much more comfortable putting my West Indian influence in my music because they made me feel that much more proud to be like, yeah, my knees are Jamaican and I say it. So, so he wasn't even proud of his Jamaican culture until he was influenced by Latinos and somehow Latinos made him more proud to be. This tether is lost in the sauce. This time, he didn't even want to rep his own squad until he saw the Latinos and felt the Latino influence. But we supposed to believe motherfuckers like this created hip hop. Okay. But I'm just saying, a lot of the times, it ain't until you're made to feel comfortable giving it to the people who and what you really are, what your influences are, or your upbringing in the house, that you do it. So, you know, being that I've been made to feel comfortable doing it, I think I also got to acknowledge and credit the Latinos for their influence on me. Yes, we know the Latinos influence you heavily. We know the Latinos made you feel so secure in yourself. For some reason, you needed the Latino stamp of approval, but that does not mean that they created the thing that we know as hip hop. What the hell are we talking about, y'all? I would have never thought in my wildest dreams we'd even be doing a stream on this topic. I mean, who even said that this was up for debate? We we know it to be true that this is a strictly foundational Black American creation, but yet these tethers got to do what tethers do. Come on. And hit the like button, guys. Likes are free after all. If you want to support the channel, hit the super chat, hit the PayPal, or like uh, Umar, where's the school Johnson says, hit the cash app, family. Hit the cash app. Come on, cash apps. Cash apps. <laughs> Any more cash apps? 
Come on, y'all, let's get into it. And and surprisingly, we actually have some Latinos that are speaking truth to power and admitting, hey, there was some Latinos around in the early days. Latinos may have been the first students. They may have been in the building or in the neighborhood when it started, but they did not create it. So let's hear straight from a Latino himself. Joe uh, stated that Black people and Puerto Rican created hip-hop together. It was a side-by-side 50-50 thing. And while I have a lot of respect for Fat Joe, and I think he receives a lot of unnecessary hate on social media, especially from uh, the younger generation and from folks who aren't from New York, uh, I think his numbers and percentages here are a little off. I have been to the South Bronx before, my first time uh, back in the mid to late 90s. And at that Let's time, it, it looked family. like Let's it get into it. And Dwayne, thank you for the contribution, brother. Appreciate you. Let me go ahead and drop a bomb for you. It was possibly 50-50 with Black and Puerto Rican people side by side, like a hip-hop utopia. So in fairness to Fat Joe, when he was a kid coming up, in the forest projects in the South Bronx in the late 70s and early 80s, uh, it is possible that it may have looked 50 And yes, they may have been instrumental, that they may have been doing their thing alongside us in the 70s and the 80s, but that's not when it started, goddammit. That's not when it started. And Log Vegas, thank you so much for the contribution. Let me drop the bomb for you. Let's go, y'all. Get the likes up. Yeah. However, uh, when we are talking about the original days, in the early 70s uh, and prior, the inception, because that is the focus here. Um, it is unlikely that the numbers of uh, Puerto Ricans actively involved uh, you know, in hip hop with black people at that same time would be that high. And I wanna repeat, I'm talking about the early days, not the mid to late 70s or even the early 80s because in the mid to late 70s and early 80s, after, after hip hop was created, uh, there were some notable Puerto Rican figures who- Keyword after, keyword after. Shoot, I remember breakdancing in high school and watching the movie uh, Crush Groove or something like that. And there was maybe a couple Latinos and this is shout out to Sheila E. There was a few people, a part of the culture and the community in the 70s and the 80s, but not no inception. They didn't originate a damn thing. Contributed a lot to the culture. Guys like Joe Conzo, uh, DJ Disco Wiz, Prince Whipper Whip, Charlie Chase, and Crazy Legs. And Puerto Ricans also contributed a lot to both graffiti and breaking. So I want to be very clear that Puerto Rico- put a one in the chat if you have never heard of any of these people that he just listed, because I haven't. Crazy Legs, I heard of him because I used to break dance, but everybody else you name, I never heard of him. Both graffiti and breaking. So I want to be very clear that Puerto Ricans were definitely in the building or were outside practicing, uh, you know, these elements when hip hop the first students of the game, the first ones to adopt, the first ones to assimilate what is known as hip hop, but you didn't create shit. Was created, but if anything, uh, they were contributing to the sound and elements that were already established uh, by black folk. Come on, y'all, come on. So why is it that as many Latinos as we have out here in these virtual streets, we got one who's actually telling the truth. We got one who's actually telling the truth. And I know everybody wants to run around talking about Cool Herc, Cool Herc, Cool Herc, and Cool Herc has Jamaican descent or whatever, whatever. Let's hear straight from Cool Herc's mouth who started what. I was always imitating James Brown, yeah. always, always. And that kind of stuck. So what were you doing? And Fars trying to... The first thing he says is I was always imitating James Brown. To make the American people and dance to the music, I, is, I start to say that I could use their rhythm bass instead of using Jamaican rhythm bass. But along the way, a few people know I was Jamaican. He said instead of using his Jamaican rhythm bass, he was using their, i.e. our rhythm bass. Come on, y'all. He said a few people even knew he was Jamaican. One of the first DJs in the Bronx to borrow a technique from Manhattan. Instead of using Jamaican rhythm bass, but along the way, a few people know I was Jamaican. Herc was one of the first DJs in the Bronx to borrow a technique from Manhattan's downtown discotheques. The use of two turntables. This meant DJs could play music without interruption. 
mixing from the end of one record straight into the beginning of another. But unlike other DJs, Hurt didn't play disco music. Instead, he specialized in the kind of hard-edged funk music that others ignored. Oh, he specialized in funk music. Who created funk music? I'll wait. Hey, hey everybody, put your answers in the chat. Who created funk music? I'll wait. Yeah, I remember going to the Hurt parties and that started in the community room and and it grew so so big that we couldn't fit in the community room nope, anymore. Nope. And it, music was just, it was slamming. I was trying to think about what would be, uh, I guess, synonymous with a cool hurt party. And it, would got, it would have to be James Brown. Uh, oh, clap your hands, stomp your feet. It wasn't, oh, it wasn't a cool hurt party. <laughs> Come on, y'all. He said himself he got most of his inspiration from James Brown. They said straight up he was incorporating funk, i.e. James Brown. Come on, let's get into it, y'all. Let's get into it. But we still got Tariq Nasheed out here having a ride for us and defend the legacy of hip-hop because these Latinos is trying to claim that they started the shit. Come on, come on. How did we ever let it get this far? And y'all think he's going too hard on the tethers on the Twitter spaces. Y'all think it's devices for us to delineate. Y'all... These motherfuckers is raping and pillaging our culture right before our eyes. Going into hip hop. Hip hop is a foundation of black American creation. It's a positive creation that has changed the world. Instead of saying, hey, it's foundational black Americans who created this culture, the narrative, well, Jamaicans helped do it too. Puerto Ricans helped do it too. Now they're saying Italians helped create some goddamn hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So instead of just giving us the credit, everybody has to kind of pick off of it and kind of vulture credit for themselves instead of giving us the credit for it. That's the problem. Well, that, okay, I was, I was gonna get to the hip hop thing. Yeah. I think the hip hop, this, uh, the history of hip hop conversations is, is very important mm -hmm. because hip hop is not just rapping. No, it's not. Africa Bambada broke down the elements and most of us who are hip hop heads follow those elements from breakdancing, graffiti writing, DJing, rapping as well. And this was a perfect interview because I think the interviewer is a tether. I think the interviewer is a Latino. So we're going to see a battle of the minds right before our eyes and see firsthand how these motherfuckers are trying to tether to our invention. All from foundational black Americans, all of it. Well, all created by FBAs. There were, there were, there's no doubt Puerto Ricans were present. In the present early doesn't 1970s. mean create. Present doesn't mean create. They, they were present. They were one or two were at a couple of parties. They didn't create anything. Well, what, what do we, how do we define create? Create means you did And in classic tether fashion, they gonna play ignorant. Well, how do we find create? Well, Tariq, what's the definition of create? This motherfucker don't know what create means. He don't know what create means now, y'all. He gonna make Tariq define what creation is because he's so goddamn juvenile. He's so goddamn lost in the sauce. This motherfucker's in denial. He really listened to Fat Joe word for word when he said 50-50. He was, yes, Fat Joe, you said 50 50 okay i'm gonna ride for you it's it's 50 50 nah 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 the Ricans were present in the present early doesn't 1970s. mean create present doesn't mean create they, they were present they were one or two at a, at a couple of parties they didn't create anything well what what do we how do we define create create means you did something that nobody else was doing okay when it comes to break dancing there were puerto ricans creating break dancing moves that nobody else was doing no they were doing moves that some of the old break dancers were doing crazy legs and those dudes admitted they were doing old dance moves that the FBA dancers were doing. Puerto Ricans didn't start breaking until the late 70s, early 80s. But those were those were new moves. Head spins. No. Went oh, my gosh. We had some Latinos who created some new moves. Yeah, that doesn't mean they created break dancing. That doesn't mean they create. Really, we got to even have this discussion. You see how our culture is under attack from the left, from the right, up, down, everywhere. You got, we got the African tethers. We got the Latinos trying to tether. We got the Caribbeans trying to tether. Y'all, we are constantly dealing with an onslaught, and this is ridiculous. Hit the like button on the way in if you haven't done so already, and if you want to support the mission, hit the cash app, hit the PayPal. Let's continue with the content. Windmills, nobody, do. crazy legs invented the windmill. No, there, there's videos of people doing certain things that look like windmills. He probably did a variation of something that was already going on. I've seen videos from the 1930s and 40s of black people doing something that looks just like the windmill. There's stuff where black people are doing the moonwalk. 
there's all types of footwork movements. There's people like Lil Buck, who was a dancer in the 1940s and 50s doing floor work. And he inspired A1 B-Boy Sosa, Trixie, some of these people who were the early B-Boys in the early 70s. Black people were already doing these moves. They were getting a lot of the moves from James Brown. But because a few Latinos learned how to break dance in the 80s, they created the shit, huh? These motherfuckers come around 60, 30 years later, but they created the shit. Okay, okay. It, it's so funny, though, that, that the white folks ain't running around claiming they created hip-hop. I mean, we had some early white adopters, kind of late to early wh white adopters, the Beastie Boys. <laughs> we got people like Eminem, who, who we say is a guest, who, who is a guest of hip-hop. Yeah, we're going to allow these motherfucking Latinos to claim that they created our shit. I don't think so. Brown and other people, we've been doing moves that look like breakdancing, and that's where they got it from. So, Puerto Ricans did not create any of that because you would see something like that in Puerto Rico. Where would they get it from if they didn't get it from us? Well, I, I think hip hop is, is completely an American thing. Mm -hmm. it's it's exactly, brother, really exactly. We got another mic in the chat. We got some of their names. So, so he created Mike TV, y'all. <laughs> the success of Mike TV is 50-50 is with me and the other mic. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Come on. Based on proximity and simularity alone. Mm -mm. You're from. Well, it's a foundational Black American creation. Let's and be very clear. Also, it was created in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Bron who was living in the Bronx, New York at the time in this neighborhood? There's two groups living in the Bronx in this neighborhood at this time. Mm -hmm. Black, foundational Black Americans, mm -hmm. and right next to them were Puerto Ricans. But the Puerto Ricans at the time in New York, many of them were on the same racist shit that we have a lot of people out here on. Puerto Ricans Guys, I'm gonna drop the streamer link if anybody wants to call in and give their opinion. I don't care if you agree, I don't care if you disagree, but ladies and gentlemen, put in the chat at least if you are from the East Coast and if you know about the very contentious relationships between or relations, if you will, between Latinos and foundational black Americans because they are extremely racist. Come on now. We're not rocking with black people in large numbers like that. In fact, the Puerto Rican gangs, they were walking around with swastikas on their damn jackets. The Puerto Ricans were called Nazis by some of the cats out there because they were aligning themselves with that white supremacist ideology. They were not rocking with brothers. You listen to interviews with Grandmaster Cass, he even said, hey man, it was only one or two Puerto Ricans rocking with us. They were racist against us and they were playing the congas and they weren't really going to the parties like that. It was only one or two. So we're not going to give credit to one or two folks who wandered off into a party and make it seem like that that person was a creator. It's a 100% FBA creation. Okay, well, in yeah. terms of the, the racism from the Puerto Ricans, I think that's from a a specific generation mm -hmm. because I have uncles and and people before me that lived segregated in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. There were three main neighborhoods in the Bronx. On the other side of Webster Avenue was your blacks. On this side was Puerto Ricans. And then if you went to the to the um, to the no one is doubting that you guys lived in the same neighborhoods as us. Stop deflecting. Stop projecting. Just because you lived close to us does not mean that you were instrumental in the origination of one of our most global crowning achievements. Stop the cap, y'all. Stop the cap. West, it was mm -hmm. Italians. Mm -hmm. And you didn't cross these streets. And if you cross these streets, you got your ass kicked. Mm -hmm. And even though I'm dark, mm -hmm. brothers knew I wasn't from Webster Avenue. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not from there. If I went over there, I got my ass beat. Mm -hmm. If someone came on this side, they got their ass beat. But as we got older, as my generation got older, we erased that division. To a certain degree. To a, to certain, a certain degree. degree. My father's generation grew up with those divisions. Mm -hmm. I witnessed it as a kid, but as coming up, I wanted to hang out with Tyrone. Mm -hmm. Tyrone's coming over to my house. Mm -hmm. We broke, I, I believe my generation kind of broke those lines in the mid 70s going into the late 70s. But um, what is this tether babbling on about? We don't care that in the 70s or the mid 70s, the next generation bro broke the racial tensions between the Latinos and the blacks and Harlem and the East Coast. We talking about who originated hip hop and Tariq was speaking truth to power and the host is doing a whole lot of deflecting. So your position is that there were no Puerto Ricans that innovated anything in hip hop. No, they didn't create anything. Doing a move that you see a black person do He's spinning right, and then you spin to the left and say, hey, I created the left spin. That ain't creating anything. You just did a, a Come on, of what Come that on. black person did. Give the black person credit. If I go to go. Cuba and I get some beans and rice and put some hot sauce on it, that's not my new creation. I just put some sauce on some shit that was already there. I'm not going to take credit from the people. There's a brother, um, I can't think of his name. It's Foundation of Black American. He wrote and performed two of the biggest reggae hits. Uh, one of the songs was I Can See Clearly Now. That was one of the big, first big international reggae songs. Um, he's from here. 
he didn't go over to Jamaica and say, hey, man, look at what I created. I created this, even though he had the biggest we hit. We don't do that. We play roles, instrumental roles, even in other people's cultures and developing other genres of music. And we don't do that bombastic shit that the Caribbeans and the Latinos are attempting to do right now. I mean, I don't understand it. I get that hip hop has reached its peak. I get that it's a global phenomenon. I get that also tethers are in the United States at an alarming number. And now that they have rows and ranks, look at how they're starting to act. Now that they got a full force, now that they opened up the border and, and they're filling up the asylum cities, y'all. Come on, y'all. Now we got them trying to rewrite history right before our eyes. And we paved the way for them to even get in this goddamn country, let alone participate in the thing we know is hip hop. He said, look, I, I came over here. I, I respect the culture. I love what they were doing. I did my version of it just to pay homage. It became a huge hit, but this is their thing. That's how you do things with respect. You don't come over and do something that you see another culture doing because the root of hip hop comes out of the Carolinas, if we're going to be very honest. That's why many of the B-boys and the DJs in the Bronx, they, their roots are in the Carolinas. Even the B-boying music. Um, James Brown is from the Carolinas. Um, some of the first rhymers, they got um, Pygmy Markham. He made one of the first records in the 1960s that would be considered a rap record. He's rapping in four bar increments. He's from North Carolina. Grandmaster Kaz, I think his family's from North Carolina. Melly Mel, I think his family's from mm. North Carolina. And real quick, real quick, y'all, I got to check on the poll that I put in the chat. At the beginning of the stream, I put a poll in the chat. I said, um, I said, did FBAs create hip hop? We've got the votes cast it. 94% uh, of you guys say yes. And we've got uh, a surprising. 6% that <laughs> say no. So we do have some tethers among us. Tethers, hit the like button, y'all. Hit the like button. Carolina and South Carolina. Um, one of the first female MCs. Um, well, everybody shot. black in New York City. Yeah. If, you, if you're black in New York City, everybody's got family in the Carolinas. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so up in the Bronx, the root of that, that's coming out of the Carolinas. We got to give them credit. It didn't come out of Jamaica. There's absolutely nothing from Jamaica that influenced hip hop. Even Cool Herc, when he came over, he had to get rid of all of his um, Jamaican culture and really get more Americanized, according to him. He was doing what he saw the people in the Bronx doing. So we got to pay homage where Thanks. homage is. Facts. The Caribbeans want to, oh, cool, hurt this, cool, hurt that. Just because his ancestry comes from Jamaica doesn't mean he moved like a Jamaican, he acted like a Jamaican, he literally was born and raised in the United States of America, okay? He says himself that all of his influence came from funk and James Brown. So how are we going to try to give Jamaicans credit just because one of the early adopters, just because one of the pioneers of spinning two records at the same time, which is only one fraction of what hip hop encompasses, just because he had Jamaican lineage? Okay, y'all, let's hear again from the horse's mouth. I was always imitating James Brown, yeah. always, always. I was always imitating James Brown. Always, always. Guys, fill me in. Well, is James Brown Jamaican? Is, is James Brown from Haiti or something? Is James Brown from, from the Congo or Nigeria? Or or is James Brown a foundational black American? Uh, I, I may be wrong. And then I kind of stuck. So what were you doing? As far as trying to make the American people and dance to the music, I, is, I start to say that I could use their rhythm bass instead of using Jamaican rhythm. He said uh, to get the American people to dance to the music, I could use their, i.e. American, rhythm bass instead of the Jamaican rhythm bass. So he's so Jamaican, but he didn't even use the Jamaican rhythm bass. He used ours. But y'all want to put him on a pedestal and then claim that because of him, Jamaicans have a claim to hip hop? That I could use their rhythm bass instead of using Jamaican rhythm bass. But along the way, a few people know I was Jamaican. Herc was one of the first DJs in the Bronx to borrow a technique from Manhattan's downtown discotheques. The use of two turntables. This meant wow. DJ. And did Jamaicans play a part? Yeah, later, after it was already originated, after it was already popularized, I believe they say that, that Biggie Smalls is, is Caribbean or Jamaican descent, but we talking the late, the 90s now. We ain't talking the 40s or the 50s when hip hop was created. It could play music without interruption, mixing from the end of one record straight into the beginning of another. But unlike other DJs, Hurt didn't play disco music. Instead, he specialized in the kind of hard-edged funk music that others ignored. Damn, the funk music that others ignored. Who created funk? Who's the godfather of funk? Oh, wait. Come on. 
Okay, so Cool Herc is considered one of the first DJs of hip hop, right? Um, it was, there's, there were others. Yeah. yeah. There were other, yeah, um, Disco King Mario, who was before him, um, Flowers. The thing is, a lot of these DJs, they played break beats, but they played a lot of disco. They were primarily known as disco DJs. What set Herc apart, he played break beats. He didn't do any of the disco stuff. He said, I'm just going to stick with the break beat stuff. These guys tamper with the break beats. I'm just going to do primarily break beats and pander to the, the black spades and the street crowd. And that's how he got his niche in the Bronx. Okay, what about when it comes to um, graffiti writing? Because when I was a kid, mm -hmm. you, you actually had, out of, you know, white people, when it came to hip hop, they did graffiti. Mm -hmm. They weren't b-boying. They weren't, you know, some of them were break dancing. But they were doing graffiti out. If you went to a, a, a writer's meeting or at a writer's bench in the Bronx, you're going to see Puerto Rican kids, black kids, and white kids in 1975, mm -hmm. 76, 77. Mm -hmm. so where, where's the host going with this? I mean, I'm, I'm just getting tether babble, yo. I'm just, I'm just really getting lots of tether babble. Where is he going with this? In the 80s, the whites and, the, and they were doing graffiti. Okay. So what is your position on how graffiti evolved to become a... Uh, integral part of hip-hop. The thing about graffiti, it was started, modern graffiti, meaning tagging your name on a wall in an artistic fashion, that got started by one dude, a foundational black American out of Philly named Cornbread in the... So I think the reason why the host is asking them about graffiti is, is I think the host is about to try to tether the Latinos to graffiti. I think he's going to try to say in a minute that the Latinos were instrumental in, in creating graffiti. Early 1960s, very well documented. He's still alive. He's still doing interviews now. We're going to get him for this new documentary I'm doing. One dude did that. He was doing it artistically. That came, that became a real big thing. He got known for doing that. And then it spread into New York, tagging your name in a very artistic fashion. And that's how it took off. Again, we created all that stuff. Yeah, what, what he did was he just wrote his name. That's... He did it in an artistic way. It was he did it. It was artistic I mean, the way he, he did it. Egyptians it were doing it. In an oh no, we, way. we can we can <laughs> right? all we can go there. The I'm Egyptian talking way. about that's when writing on trains, top right. to bottoms, using ten different colors. Right. Cornbread right. was not doing that. But corn, just the art of it, turning it into an art form. He was doing. He wasn't just right. It was an art form. People looked at. Again, I said I have a sneaking suspicion that this Tether uh, podcast host here is going to try to latch the Latinos onto graffiti. But before he even does that, he's trying to uh, uh, demote or, or, or disregard the originator of gr graffiti. Th this dude who, who started out drawing his name in a certain style and it evolved from that into what we know as graffiti, he's already trying to discredit a foundational Black American. And I think this is the setup for him to try to claim the Latinos were so instrumental in graffiti. That as an art form, and when you did it on the train, that was a form of art. You're tagging your name as a form of art. Now, how elaborate it is in the style, that's something else. You understand? But is that, would you say people innovated graffiti as no, it went through we, the we gotta give, we're gonna give credit to that dude, the man who did it, the man who started it, doing it in an artistic fashion. That was the foundation of black American who did it and everybody else picked up on that. They saw the shine that he would get and they said, okay, let's do what he's doing and let's put our own spin on it. So he created it, you gotta give him credit for that. Okay, so, yeah? so you, you're not gonna give credit to no Puerto Ricans? Okay. Okay, no, the, because you didn't create. <laughs> I told you, motherfuckers, I told you. I told you he was going to try to tether the fucking Latinos to graffiti. He said, oh, 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 so, so you're not going to give any credit to the Puerto Ricans? <laughs> I have a sneaking suspicion that the host is Puerto Rican, and he's in his feelings. Oh, my gosh, his butchie must, his butchie must have been so tight during this interview. So, so tight. You know, show me, create something. I give people credit for creating. Do something that we didn't do. If, I'll give you credit for if it. If you look at the two biggest breakdancing groups in New York at the time. Rocksteady. New York City, and, rock, uh, rock, breakers, New York City Breakers and Rocksteady. Rock that was in the 80s, came much later. Yeah, but these guys were doing their thing in the late 70s, too. Um, Like 79, they really yeah. got started in the 80s. That's when they really took off in the 80s. And even they said, you know, we were doing the old moves of the guys before us. They said that. And by that time, the first generation, those moves, they, they were telling Crazy Legs, and he did an interview saying, hey, man, the black dudes were telling me, hey, man, why are you doing those old moves? They're played out now. So they just... 
Um, oh man, this host must have been oh so in his feelings during the entirety of this interview. And if you're new to the stream, hit the like button, guys. Hit the cash app or the PayPal if you support the mission. And let's keep on with the content. I never thought that this was even a topic of discussion. I, I sure as hell never thought that this would actually be a debate. But we've got these tethers trying to latch on to our culture in ways never seen before. Picked up on what the brothers were already doing. Give the brothers their credit. It's not that hard to give foundation of black. No, America's I, I want to give brothers credit. But yes. I want to give. I, I, I personally, I'm going to give the Puerto Ricans credit too, especially when it comes to breakdancing. I give them credit. If you created some, I give you credit. They didn't create breakdancing. They didn't create rapping. They didn't create DJ, and they didn't create graffiti. They expanded and just did what we were doing and kind of put their own spin on it. And that's not creating. Being there is not creating. See, Fat Joe was going around talking about, yeah, we created hip hop was created by Latins and blacks 50 50. That's disrespectful. That's extremely disrespectful because that's a complete lie. It's every element of hip hop. It was it was it was it was 50 50, bro. If you look at the pictures, just go see the pictures. You'll see it. I mean, there's still a good some Puerto Rican being in the Bronx in the 70s ain't 50-50. That's very dismissive, and that's a form of colonization, too. That's a colonizing mentality when you do that. So we have to call that type of stuff out. Well, um, yeah, I did hear him say that, but um, in, in terms of context, you know, hip-hop, again, we just think about rapping, mm -hmm. and, and definitely blacks have dominated mm -hmm. rap part of hip-hop. Mm -hmm. But I think when we talk about Hip hop in totality. When I talk about hip hop, I'm talking about the break dancers. I'm talking about the New York City breakers and the rock. Yeah, I mean, so he thinks that blacks just dominated the rap portion of hip hop, but the break dancing was dominated by Puerto Ricans and Latins. Okay, guys. Okay, the delusion is strong with these tethers. The delusion is strong. The infatuation with us. The obsession with us. Well, what is it, y'all? Whenever one black person does a degenerate thing, it's a stain on the whole culture. But as soon as our culture relishes in one of our achievements, it's this group coming out. No, we had a part in it. This group coming out. Oh no, we had a part in it. This group coming out. Oh no, you wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for us. Come on, y'all. Come on. They did some great things in the '80s. They did great things in it, and people, true, let's keep it above. People don't even break dance no more. We got so many new dances now that foundation of black Americans create. We create new dances every week. So we don't even break dance no more. They do them in competitions here and there. In fact, they're going to have break dancing in the Olympics in a couple of years, and that's why there's this big move for everybody to claim hip hop because now hip hop is going to be extremely commercialized. There's going to be a lot of endorsement deals coming from the corporate sector. So people are trying to get in now saying, hey, yeah, we, we created this too. So when the endorsements come, don't forget about us. So it's a money grab that's about to happen right now. Well, I, I see that your, your position is about creating and I don't know who the whole topic of discussion is about who created what. What is, oh my God, to, hats off to Tariq for even having to sit through this fuck shit. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. This host is off his rocker. Oh, well, well uh, what even does it mean to create? Oh, well, I see you're focused on, on creating, but you know, in the 80s, there were some Latinos and Puerto Ricans that, that were doing spins on their head. What the fuck are you talking about? Who created what? Really? I do. Okay, I, who's the first rapper? Oh man, well, we were That's rapping. That's a tough one. Okay. I'm They're, talking about uh, hip hop rapping. Oh, okay. Hip hop. It sure as hell wasn't a Puerto Rican. Rapping. Who do you give that credit well, to? Well, that's Coke La Rock. It sure as hell wasn't a Jamaican. The first person to rhyme at a b-boy party, that's Coke La Rock. Coke La Rock's family's from North Carolina. They've always credited Coke La Rock as the first. Nina says, I'm in New York City. That host is delusional or lying. Sister, I think both. I think both. Come on. I, I think I think they're also insecure about the fact, because again, they keep on harping on this fact that they were in the same neighborhoods as us, that they were in neighboring boroughs, that they were in close proximity to us. I think it really irks them to know that we was both in the same hood, so to speak, and we created this global sensation while they ain't really create shit. They was in the same borough as us, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and they didn't create a goddamn thing. But a whole bunch of babies out of wedlock. I mean, for, for all they talk about the stereotype of uh, of the black single mothers and shit, Maria Maria is running around with, with 12 little children. So they, they be having kids as soon as they turn 15, okay? But we ain't neither here nor there. But they really must feel quite so insecure about the fact they came from similar depraved conditions and we thrive while they simply survive. Come on, y'all. Come on. Official rapper to rap at a party. And what they did was something very nefarious. 
in many books, they would put down that Coke LaRock was Caribbean or he was an immigrant, which he's not. There's a book called Can't Stop, Won't Stop, calling him Caribbean. But when he did interviews, he was like, no, nah, I'm not Caribbean. I'm shit. My family's from North Carolina. So lies like that are very deliberate to take away the history from us. I believe David yeah. Chang wrote that book. And yeah. Asian, an Asian guy wrote Yeah, that he wrote book. that book. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying that's, in, that's completely incorrect. Com completely okay. incorrect. He, yeah. And Coke LaRock has done interviews. Like, no, I'm not Caribbean. Okay. You know, my family's from North Carolina. So yeah, he's the first technical rapper at a party, at a b-boy party. And again, a lot of the rappers from the 70s, they'll tell you, we were listening to Pig Meat Markham, the song, Here Comes the Judge. They were rapping on that song. Mm. The other Mike, <laughs> the Mike who really started Mike TV, <laughs> says the host has a channel about gangs in LA, uh, black and Mexican gangs. He doesn't even cover anything related to Caribbean culture. You know what? I saw that his channel was quite large. He had almost half a million subscribers, but I never did an audit on this channel. Let's go ahead and take a quick look real quick into um, what type of content this person even produces to be trying to argue with Tariq Nasheed over who created hip hop. Um, actually, I, I, I think just the name of the channel uh, speaks credence to what Michael is talking about because the channel's name is Street TV. Had a chance to meet Street Muhammad TV. Uh, let's see what they mostly talk about. Let, let's see what they're popular for. Uh, Black and Mexicans fight at Inglewood High School, May of 1990. Black and Mexican conflict in Compton and Los Angeles. Gang banging, LA gangs, bloods and... Oh my God, don't tell me that his whole shtick on YouTube is being divisive and trying to push some kind of narrative between Mexicans and Blacks. And then he's the same one present day trying to claim that they had a hand in creating hip hop. Oh my God, oh my God. You focus on nothing but degeneracy, gang and street beefs between Mexicans and Blacks. And we wonder why he speaks the way he does. We wonder why he has the rhetoric. He's been doing this for 17 years, y'all. He's been talking about street beefs between Mexican and Blacks for the last 17 years. Ooh, Tariq must have got a nice bag going on this Fool's channel. Must have got a nice bag. And is this a picture of the host? Is this him? Alex A. Alonzo? Alonzo? Is that him or is that just the face of the brand? I'm confused. I'm confused, y'all. But now, thanks to Michael, we see a little peek into this person's psyche. That's the type of content that they produce. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. If you go to my channel, mind you, if you go to my channel, let's go ahead and share the screen again, right? And if you go to my most popular videos, what you would surmise is my main stick, my main niche is exposing and uncovering the truth. Exposing and uncovering the truth and defaming and defrauding these goddamn quote unquote influencers that are scamming and grifting our cultures and communities by and large. But, you know, he's focused on uh, street beats from the 1990s. So make it make sense. Absolutely no different from what Pygmy was doing on that record to what a rapper is doing now. You can actually mix his song in with rap songs now and it'll blend in perfectly. Well, I would say that the, the first rap the first rap group to, to make a record that was not a group that was put together by an outsider had a Puerto Rican in it, the Fearless mm. Four. The Fearless Four was a real group. They put themselves together. The Sugar Hill Gang was not a real group. They were slapped together. No, well, you had um, the Funky Four plus one more. They had a record right out after the Sugar Hill Gang. You know what I'm saying? So, well, that's... Well, so, was, so did the, the Fearless Four had um, Rockin' It and uh, another song right after Sugar Hill Gang. I don't know who came first, but mm -hmm. before Tito, the lead, one of the lead rappers in the group to be Puerto Rican, you, you, you have to say, uh, I don't know, you can't say he created, but he was one of the first guys on- If you can't say he created it, what the fuck are we talking about? Oh, a group of four or five individuals, one of them was Puerto Rican or Latino, so, 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 so. See how they tether themselves? You see how they desperately latch on to us? It's sickening, it's an obsession. On wax. In 1979. When did that record come out? 79 or 80? 19, 80. 19, 80. 19, okay. Fearless yeah. Ford, 1980. Okay, yeah. Sugar so, Hill Gang's 1979. Right. You had a bunch of records in the 70s that in 1979 that came out way before that. Again, Funky Four Plus One More, that came out in 79. Um, um, hell, Curtis Blow Christmas Rapping was um, 79. 
you had a whole bunch of records coming out in 1979, right after Rapper's Delight. You had Fatback with the song King Tim the Third, which These was are the three oldest rap songs ever recorded. The third oldest song was released in 1980 by a group of rappers from New Jersey called the Sugar Hill Gang. The song is Rapper's Delight, and it's the one that a lot of people consider the first one, but they're wrong. The second oldest rap song ever recorded was released just a few months before Rapper's Delight. It's called We Rap More Mellow by a group called the Younger Generation. This group would eventually evolve into the legendary Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. But the oldest this rap song of all time has a really interesting story. Released at the beginning of 1979 and called King Tim the Third, this song wasn't supposed to be a rap song at all. This was originally an instrumental by a funk group called the Fatback Band, but they weren't happy with the song and Bill Curtis, the drummer, said this. It ain't, it ain't right, it just don't feel right. Then all of a sudden I said, let's do a rap, man. So they invited the only rapper they knew to the studio and his name was Timothy Washington, aka King Tim the Third. And that became the first rap song ever released. And what he think we we don't have access to Google? He think we don't have access to the internet? The hosts really think that we gonna take his word for face value? No, 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 no. If you're a follower of Mike TV, if you're a subscriber of Mike TV, then you don't lack critical thought. <laughs> you do not lack critical thought. For rappers delight. So there was already um, groups rapping in the '70s on wax. Yeah. So. Well, also. Uh, um, Fat Joe was is probably off because I don't know. I think Fat Joe may maybe made that 50 50 statement um, out of emotion. Mm -hmm. But because, but Puerto Ricans are a small group. You know, mm -hmm. the island only has three million three million people. Where yeah. FBA is is what 40 million. Yeah. yeah. So it's not going to compare numerically. Yeah. And to keep it a buck, Fat Joe's initial 50-50 comments wasn't just out of emotion, but his reaction to the backlash thereafter, oh my gosh, Fat Joe was oh so triggered. Joey Crack was oh so triggered by his foundational simply saying, hey, watch your mouth, boy, you're wrong. And you know when you win, there's always a f some people that hate. There's some people that hate. You know, I tell you, I never really f*** with Twitter, but I go on there to see. They always hating on me. And they said they've been like lately talking about Latinos wasn't in rap and this and this. These guys are illusion. We're from the Bronx, New York. Shit happens. And so when hip hop started, it's Latino and black, half and half. But they going at me because I'm like the only Spanish dude, like really with a big voice. Fuck that. And Latinos wasn't there. You was invited. You are a, a specimen. You, I don't know what the fuck is up with these people. They don't know their facts. These are the three oldest rap songs ever recorded. The third oldest song was released in 1980 by a group of rappers from New Jersey called the Sugar Hill Gang. The song is Rapper's Delight, and it's the one that a lot of people consider the first one, but they're wrong. The second oldest rap song ever recorded was released just a few months before Rapper's Delight. It's called We no Rap or no Mellow by a group called The Younger Generation. This group no would Latinos. eventually evolve into the legendary Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. But the oldest rap song of all time has you a really Latino? interesting story. Released at the beginning of 1979 and called King Tim the Third, this song wasn't supposed to be a rap song at all. This was originally an instrumental by a funk group called the Fatback Band, but they weren't happy with it. I don't see no, I don't see no Latino, Puerto Rican influence, y'all. I'm sorry. Even when we want to talk about more modern rap, uh, the Latinos and the Puerto Ricans don't really even come into the discussion. I said a hip hop, the hip, the hip, the hip, the hip, hip hop, you don't stop the rock and do the band, man. Breaks in the bus, breaks on the car, breaks to make you a superstar. So feel the heartbeat, we're the treacherous three, we got a new heartbeat. Broken glass everywhere, people pissing on the stage, you know they just don't care. But it's like that, and that's the way it is. I wanna rock y'all, that's all you need to know. I need a beat. I don't see no Latinos. I don't see no Latinos. I don't see not one Latino. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. I see a Jamaican. Shout out to Biggie. Shout out to Biggie. I see a Jamaican. And 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 I think he was actually born here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe he immigrated at a young age. But God damn it, I see a Jamaican before I ever see a Latino or a Puerto Rican playing any significant part. But all right. Yeah. But because it was in the Bronx and that's where a lot of Puerto Ricans were living, 
you know, I, I think they did play a role. Um, you're using the word create. I right. I don't know what the right word is. I, I'm, I'm saying that they just happened to be there. They didn't create anything nor did they innovate anything, and nor did they really influence the culture, if we're gonna be very honest, and that's okay, that's okay. You know, the black people created scratching and everything, we created all of the innovations just because a Puerto Rican was there. You can't point to a Puerto Rican dude and say, hey, this dude did something that everybody else followed. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay. Now, when, when you... the, the, the Puerto Ricans were the first students of hip hop. <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> that's okay, that's a great distinction. Just tell the truth. You're the first students of hip hop. Well, when and the question is, why can't they be satisfied with that? Nobody would contest that. Nobody would argue that the Puerto Ricans and the Latins and the Latinos weren't the first students of hip hop. But why is that not enough? Why are they seeking more? When it comes to breakdancing, wasn't no one teaching Puerto Ricans how to dance? Oh, they would, man. I mean, <laughs> they were they were doing old. Oh, was that okay? Was, no, that's okay. That, okay, that, yeah. They were doing old moves that brothers were doing in the early 70s. Again, the stuff that they were doing, we can show you stuff going back to the no, 1940s. You're, you're right about those old clips, but also we, we don't know who was watching these old 1940s clips of people doing the they, moonwalk and break they, Man, look, you talk to some of the early B-boys, they would tell you, A1 B-boy Sosa, he did an interview. He was one of the first B-boys at Hertz parties. He said, I was watching the, um, the Nicholas Brothers, um, um, Peg Leg Bates, these people would be on variety shows doing these moves. So they admit what they were seeing. They, they tell you what they were looking at and getting these moves from. Now, I heard you say you, you, you're going to do a documentary on this, the yeah. history of hip-hop. Yes. Uh, how do you plan on approaching that, being that, um, you know, New York? Yeah, and shout-out to the documentary. Shoot, I'm going to see that when it comes out, y'all. Most definitely, most definitely. Uh, but guys, if you're new to the stream, hit that like button on the way in, hit the cash app or the PayPal if you feel so inclined. Um, after the stream, we're gonna be doing a grand expose on someone called Princella the Queen Maker. After this stream ends, it'll redirect you straight into the next stream we have going on after this. But what I wanna segue to now, what I want to segue to now is a debate had between Tariq Nasheed a couple nights ago, as well as a Latino man, Puerto Rican man. I don't know exactly what he is. He's not an FBA. Um, I think his name is Dr. Cologne, but he was talking so much shit. I'm going to refer to him as Dr. Colin. Um, let's hear how Dr. Colin is going to try to cape and project and deflect and try to insert the Latin culture into the origination of what we know as hip hop. Plays that would play these breaks. There's Baron, Breakout, Theodore, you know, Herg, Flash, Bam, Charlie Chase is part of that first generation. He's 75. So, you know, I can't speak to Smokey because I don't know, but I know who the first gen is. Um, and Mario is part of the first generation, no doubt about it. Uh, no doubt about it. What's up, Tariq? How are you, man? I'm good. How's everybody doing? Uh, good, my brother. Glad to have you up, Tariq. What's up, yes, man? Indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, man, let's, so let's, first of all, we, we got to clear up a lot of stuff. There is no such thing as... And big shout out to Red Supreme TV. I think that's the name of the brother's channel. Um, he, he's been creating some great coverage on not just the migrant crisis, but also the whole hip hop debate. And he was actually doing a stream discussing uh, the origins of hip hop where Tariq pulled up. And this is the interaction that unfolded. So again, uh, sh shout out to Red Supreme TV. Sorry if I'm butchering that brother's channel name. The Latin break. There's no such thing. Um, that's something that our good brother, Mr. Cologne, has made up. Nobody was doing a Latin break because a Latin break doesn't exist. James Brown, when he did give it up and turn it loose, that wasn't Latin. Even in the song, when they were playing the Congos, he was like, to the jungle, brother. In the jungle, brother, he was making a reference to Africa. The Congo has always been an African instrument. When you say Latin, you're talking about Spanish culture. There's nothing Spanish about a damn Congo. Let's get that straight. They try to play these little sleight of hand tricks when it comes to instrumentation and music genres. A lot of the Congo playing in the early 70s, in, in, including the Incredible Bongo Band, there was a foundational Black American sister out of Detroit playing on that record. Uh, the same sister who was playing on some of the early Marvin Gaye records. If you look at or listen to the What's Going On record, listen to a lot of the Congos in that. That's a sister from Detroit playing that. Nobody Latin. So let's stop this stuff. We knew about the Congos. We knew about drums. We knew about percussive instruments. That was something that we'd always, we've been doing that for a long time. We would use our body as 
percussive instruments. We had something called Pat and Juba, where we would pat on our bodies and rhyme. How many of y'all remember Hambone? The Hambone, Hambone, have you heard? And we're patting our bodies. So we knew about percussive exactly. instruments. So we, we've always done that. We've always rhymed. And shout out to the Wife School podcast. Thank you so much for contributing to the platform. They've gifted one Might TV membership. So one of you lucky viewers got a membership coming your way. And everybody show some love to the Wife School podcast. Dover Beats is foundational Black Americans. Going back to the 1920s, there's Black people rhyming. And let's talk about what rapping is. Rapping is atonal rhyming over a beat meaning that you're not committing to any type of note. There's records going back to the 1920s of foundational Black Americans rhyming over beats, not just the Jubilees. I'm, uh, we have um, jazz singers doing this stuff. Um, going back to what Cologne said earlier about um, Pumpkin um, being one of the first producers in hip hop, Pumpkin was Panamanian. Nobody knew that guy was Panamanian at all. He was playing funk breaks and the record rapping and rocking the house. That's uh, an interpolation of Cheryl Lynn got to be real foundational black American sister. So everybody he knew he was Panamanian brother. Everybody they, nobody knew he was knew. Panamanian. Everybody uh, sir, knew he was Panamanian. Tariq, come on, man. So, uh, Cologne. Come on, I, man. <laughs> not rock is in, uh, listen, brother. Okay. If you want to talk about what people knew, you're talking mm -hmm. about, all of these Latinos who were there beforehand, everybody in the movie microphone check, including Shy Rock, who's rapping on Ramming and Rock in the House. Right. She said wasn't no Puerto Ricans there in the early days. Yep. <laughs> that's wild. That's wild. Hey, Wife School Podcast, that's crazy. Yeah, normally when you gift a membership, it selects somebody random in the audience, but it gifted you a membership. <laughs> that's wild. I think YouTube just really wants you to be a member. <laughs> And yes, Prince of Paraphernalia, uh, Tariq is just tearing him up, y'all. Absolutely tearing him up, having a field day. And this dude's supposed to be a doctor. Understand? Okay. okay. Melly Mel, who's in the movie, said wasn't no Puerto Ricans there in the early days. The first B-boys who were there in the early 70s, Sasa, Trixie, they said, weren't no Puerto Ricans dancing with them. Coke LaRock, the first MC. Wasn't no Puerto Ricans around. Charlie Rock, who you had on your broadcast before, he mm -hmm. said, wasn't no Puerto Ricans around. Nobody knew these so-called. He didn't say people. that. He didn't, Tariq, he didn't say that. Come on now. Yes, he, he said did. there wasn't, he said there wasn't many Puerto Ricans around. He said there was some. Sir. Okay, he didn't say the, there were no, none. No, in the early days. In the early no days. Puerto Ricans, right. Wasn't no Puerto Ricans around. He said, y'all came later. I have him on film saying this. You right. came later. I have him on film saying this, brother. No, he, he's on my he, he's on my platform saying it. So yeah, right. I know he said that. Yeah, right. And and are you saying all of these pioneers are lying, Cologne? No, no. Let me let me explain. So when they say that they again, I'm not where they were. I'm not in their head. I can't speak for them, and I won't. I won't even attempt to do that. As far as Shahrat and but Earth you were Eagles, in the Bronx. And shout out to the Wife School Podcast coming through with another gifted membership. Appreciate you, darling. Well, wait, wait. I'm uh, assuming your gender now in the 2024 and it's real dangerous to do these things. I mean, for, for all I know, with as much grifting I've seen, for all I know, you're a man putting on a wife school. <laughs> Speaking of grifters, right after this, guys, we're going to be doing the Princella, the Queenmaker expose. So speaking of fake dating gurus and whatnot, we're going to be exposing one right after this. <laughs> but thanks again for the contribution. I appreciate you. I was in the Bronx, yes. Yeah, but let me let me answer Tariq. So as far as Sharak, so um, Pumpkin is Panamanian and Costa Rican. The conga player that's playing on rapping and rocking the house is Puerto Rican. Okay, so, and, and I have him in my documentary coming up talking about that session and what happened in that session and the, and the climate in the Bronx. So when they say, this is what I wanna know, Tariq, when they say, what, what element are they talking about? Are they talking about MCing? Are they talking about the B-Boys? Because Charlie Rock says there wasn't a lot of B-Boys, but then I bring up five foundational B-Boy crews from 75 to 79, and he says, I never heard of them. Right, so nobody's ever heard of those people. That's no, that's made. not true, brother. That's that not is true. true. What flyers are they on? TBB? 
Yes. What flyers do you see those guys? I got on? flyers for you. I'll send you what, the flyers. I would love I'll to send see you them. the flyers. I will, I'll from send what you. And, and from what year? Right. The 70s. I'll send you the I, flyers. I would like to see them. Uh, all okay. of these other these other P- Puerto Rican B-boy crews you were naming, none of them are on flyers. Yep. They, they're all on flyers, bro. No, wait, how come nobody, flyers. Who's flyer? I would love to see these flyers. Jams. Because no, nobody, you weren't, nobody you weren't heard of us. these guys, bro. And these That's weren't really true. B-boy crews. These were just like little cliques of Puerto Rican dudes hanging with each other. They weren't really B-boy crews. You're we, saying they're we, B-boy crews. Nobody knew them. But we talked about earlier, you weren't on yet. We talked about what was happening on Herc's side of town, what was happening on in, in Bronxdale where Mario was. And then we talked about what was happening at, at in the South Bronx, 118, 129 St. Martins. That's where they were. So if you talk to Grand Wizard Theater, he'll tell you who those crews were. If you talk to Charlie Chase, he'll tell you who those crews were. He's the Puerto B-Boy Rico. community knows who those crews were. I don't know how Charlie Rock does not know them. He says he was around there, but he says up and down, he has no record. But here's what's funny, Tariq. He says he doesn't know them, but he knows track two and he knows bomb five. Track two is from Star Child of Rock, one of those crews. Bomb five is and from nobody TV. heard of these. Nobody heard of Star Child of Rock. They've never been on no flyers back in the day. Oh, brother. No. I'll send them to you. I'll send them. Nobody's to you. heard of them, dude. Okay. A couple of dudes send them to you. hanging around on their block. They, they, nobody knew these no, these guys. No, these man. are big these, crews, bro. These are not. Small they were crews. not big crews. Nobody knows them. Nobody knows any of these guys, man. <laughs> That's why, like why the are you dudes saying who that? like because Charlie. Don't said nobody that. know these dudes, man. No, nobody knows them. Nobody knows these guys. You guys are trying to make some insignificant dudes relevant that nobody knew in the 1970s. So, so these I tell guys you didn't what. move the culture. I tell you nobody tell knew you these dudes, man. Nobody knew what. them. I'll tell you what. On your, That's why on there's your no bro- proof. It's always, I'm going to show you. I'll show you later. No, show us now. Show us where they are. Where, well, I can't. Who I can't, knows these guys? I can't pull up the flyer for you right nobody now. Nobody knew them, lie. man. Charlie Rock didn't know them. And even your guy, when you had him on your broadcast, they were saying that they got their dancing from black people. Who's that? Your Who? guy. Well, Who's my what's guy? your guy? Was it Batch? Yeah, Batch. No, he didn't say he got dancing from black people. He said they, that they, hip hop comes come from on. black Americans. Yeah. You know, they were they they that's, learned that's it from black he people. He that's they learned it from black said. people. Uh, dude, don't said. twist the man's words. They got it from black people, dude. That's what he said on your broadcast. That's they got it from black people. Said. That's not oh, what man. he said. That's what he that's said. That's not man. what don't he said. The words. Tariq, come on. Come on. He said dude, so he said hip hop came from black black people. That's what he said. Uh, All right, so is he a liar? Is he he a liar? If he said hip-hop comes from black people, your own guy, the Puerto Rican, Batch, who's a part of this magnificent crew that you're talking about, saying that hip-hop came from black people, is your boy lying? No, he's not lying. He's talking about the the rap industry. That's what he's talking about. Oh, He made that clear. He made that clear. He said, I'm talking about the rap part of He he didn't say that. He didn't say that on there. No, 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 no. he cut. Did you see the second video that he made? Oh Lord, the explain it now. Explain. No, it. I mean, did you see the second? He made it. I didn't make it. He made it. He said he made a second came video from his black brothers. He said your Puerto yes. Rican brethren said hip hop came from black people. That's what he, he said. He now you're trying to that. remix what he said. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. He did say Come on, that. Derek. Tariq. Right. Tariq. I'm so, not. So I'm why not. are you denying it? That. Okay, if he said it, why are you denying it now, Derek? I'm not denying it. I'm telling you what what he meant by what he said. Oh, he meant something else. That's what he's saying. I can't okay, speak There you him, go, bro. family. See, this is what we're saying. This is why we, we're setting the record straight, because y'all doing this little word, this this little sleight no, of no, hand no. game. Brother. Well, it meant something else. He said this, but it meant something. That's why we have to get the record straight with you and the Fat Joes out here. So what about the Zulu King? Under- so what bro. about the Zulu King? What about them, dude? What about the so Zulu about, Kings? You're talking the about found, they're part of the foundational crews. The Zulu Kings are part of the that that folk, those foundational crews. The thing is, a lot of those cats were nomadic b boys and b girls, so they were going all around the Bronx dancing, clicking up with people. So sure. they were so a, a crew or a clique. These were like informal gatherings. You get three or four people from. Who are individual dancers? They become a clique for that day, and then they no, become no, no. But we're dancers. not talking about that. It, it, no, we're no, talking no. about the Zulu yeah, 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 Kings. Because, 
Um, We're talking about the specific Zulu Kings. Charlie Rock is a member of the original 11 Zulu Kings. Okay. That's not a nomadic. I'm asking you if they're part of these foundational crews, which they are. It's TBB, it's Salso, it's the Zulu Kings, it's Star Child of Rock, it's CC, and it's the Rockwell Association. And when you got legends these are not foundational crews these are just a lot of these are random crews the tbb they're not a foundational crew what are they the foundation of you're trying to mix some tbb no, no, no. With they're, the, the, they're the first they're the first foundational b-boy crews no they're the not mix. no they're not i'm talking about the five all the crews these are the tbb first is crews. not the first time no you can't be the first foundational group of anything and nobody's ever heard of you they're not the first foundation Everyb- group. everybody they're knows not they're TBB not comparable is. They're not comparable to the Zulu Kings and Charlie Rock and those guys. Charlie Rock and those guys are on early flyers in the 1970s. No, TBB, no, no, they're, they're not. not. No, they're not. Charlie Rock, there's, Charlie Rock's name is on the flyer in 1977, Char- sir. Yes, he's an MC. He's a rapper. He's an MC at that point. He's Charlie not Rock was an B-boy. MC. Ch- Charlie, Charlie Rock, Rock was is with the Soul Sonic Force. Yes, he's Charlie- an MC. Charlie Rock made an MC made a record in nineteen in the early eighties. So he was rapping in the early eighties, but he was a b boy. I know he was a b boy. Yeah, in I, the seventies. I, I, I know. I know he was a b boy in the seventies. So but what are you talking about? At a certain here, right? time, I'm, I'm I'm talking about the name on the flyer. When right. he's on that flyer, he's not on there as a b boy. He's on there as an MC. That's what I'm telling you. These are his words, not mine. I've already discussed this with. At him. that time, so, he was still a b boy. He was a b boy. You had Melly Mel. So Melly Mel was a b boy. No, no, Melly. Yes. Mel, right, I'm yes. saying Melly Mel was a b boy, but he was an MC too. I know. Grandmaster I know Flash that. was yeah. a b boy. Grandmaster Flash was a b boy too. Yes, I know. Sky I know. Rock was a b girl. A, yes, a lot I of know. them rapped and rhymed and danced. So that's not anything. Yes. That's not saying anything, sir. I, no, I agree with you. Everything you said. Okay, yeah, but but the thing is, you tried to do a slight. You try. You tried to do a sleight of hand to make it seem like there was a difference between the two, as if they weren't doing the same thing. Many of them were b boys, b girls, MCs, all wrapped up in one. Graffiti artists, all wrapped in one. Herc was a graffiti artist as well as a right. DJ. So right. a lot of them encompassed a lot of the elements of hip hop. So let's not do the sleight of but, hand. But but do you there. think it's do you think it's responsible of you? somebody who's doing a documentary at, at, at that caliber that you're going to do yours do you think it's responsible that you're saying that these other crews did not exist or nobody knew about them have you done have you tried to speak to any of these people it's responsible to tell the truth because many people within your community the white latino community are going oh, around on, here trying to on. colonize our culture by lying and you weren't there. Have you, at have those you spoken to them? I've spoken, have you spoken to, to any of I've these guys. To, I've spoken to all of the pioneers, almost every have significant pioneer. Uh, I don't need to speak to Batch. Have you spoken I don't need, to Charlie I, look, Chase? But, when, when I tried to speak to you and other Puerto Ricans, y'all were ducking and dodging and dipping and diving. When I, I tried to speak, right, I was the only right. one when, that ducked out. I was the only one that ducked out. Right. When I tried to, when I tried to speak to you, you kept dipping and diving and ducking out and flaking out. Mm-hmm. I wanted to speak to Charlie Chase, and I told you to hook me up with them. Y'all start dipping and diving and ducking and dodging. So I, I don't want to hear him. that. No, no, no. I, I don't want to hear on, that. I don't. I, let's not. I know we're not going to do that because when I went to the Bronx looking for you guys, none of y'all hit me up. I went to the Bronx. Hey, bro, I called bro. you personally. I said, Derek. Give me some of these Puerto Rican pioneers. Give me crazy me legs information. You didn't ask me that. Y'all, you didn't ask me that. That's on, a man. lie. Come, Come on, on. You didn't ask me that. You that's a goddamn that. lie. That's a damn that. lie. You yes, asked I for did. my information. And I you asked for all of those people's information. That's a goddamn lie. You're lying okay. now. Well, I asked I for some of these Puerto Ricans. I, did, did I, I not ask for did, did I not ask for crazy legs information? You said he's that's a lie. You did not. That's a now you're just straight up and down lying which Keep is going. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry i cut you off sir, you're gonna say something else sir now you're just Keep not you're, 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 you're arguing in bad faith because now you're just not telling the truth you I didn't ask, ask me for crazy that it, yes i did i asked you to hook me up with these puerto rican pioneers and you were like i'm gonna see what's up i'm gonna hook you up with this one random person that don't nobody know i'm like okay oh, have oh, to hit no, me no, up. No, no. Yeah, he yeah, never yeah. hit me up either randy yeah he never hit That's me randy, up when i was yeah, out there 
I right, and he's a that. nobody, and he's another nobody, by the way. But I have your nobody on there. He never hit me up anyway, and I gave you guys my yeah, number. I can't. So don't play that. I, yeah. Don't play. Yeah, don't play that no, game as no, if I, I didn't. I, reach I gave him your number. I gave him your number. Hold on. And he I never hit me up. And he, he never, never hit, hit me up. up. So That's I was not, there for not, all. I of can't it. control that. But right. here's where you didn't go. Here's where you didn't go. I don't know. I don't want to. No. 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 I don't want to hear where I didn't go. I was there with the Bronx. Oh, stop it! Stop! Stop! For what? Go to Katona Park for what? For for what? For what? What? What am I going to do at a an outdoor concert? Yeah, what am I going to do at an outdoor concert? Interview people, because that's where they all Interview work. who? In, well, I'm not playing Where's Waldo for the Puerto Ricans. Interview who? Everybody was there. Who is everybody? Everybody. All, all I'm, not play, I'm, not, I'm not playing Where's Waldo to find some Puerto Rican. Let Come me on, know man. who's who, and I'll go interview him. I'm not going to go to a concert and just kind of wish for some magical Puerto Rican to pop but the you fuck went up. To Mario Let me know who's that. who. Let me. But, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. You, you I went didn't do to, that at Mario. I didn't interview you anybody do? at Mario. I didn't interview anybody out there. What are you talking about? You told me you had your equipment and it rained. I, I did, but I didn't interview anybody out there. Number okay, one, it okay. was, it was right. too damn loud. And I was hoping to meet Charlie Rock out there, but I met him later on. So I didn't meet yeah, anybody out there at Mario Day. I didn't meet okay. anybody out there. Understood. And I'm not going to, to Katrona Park to look for some unknown Puerto Rican who nobody's telling that's, me about. That's not why I sent you. That's not why I asked so, so, you to go yeah, there. So, I, I asked you to go there. So y'all so want to play these little, the y'all want to play these little slight, uh, I'm doing that's a movie. That's why I asked I'm, you to go there. Go, uh, I'm doing you, a movie. You, I'm not, I'm not shooting a concert film. I want to talk to some pioneers. Kaz the next day. You were interviewing Kaz the I'm next day. I'm trying to find some of these Kaz Puerto Rican the whole, pioneers. Though. That's where you would have went. No, no, that's dude, where you needed to go. And y'all doing all of this running around stuff because you can't point to none of these pioneers who are Puerto Rican because they don't exist. That's why y'all play this little runaround game. They there I are no Puerto the Rican pioneers. Then you didn't I give gave you the name. No, yeah, you're just saying stuff. There's no such thing as a Puerto Rican pioneer of hip hop. You're the students of hip hop. You came later, and that's cool. <laughs> Be good with that. Okay. <laughs> what do you consider you're the first a students of hip hop? No, 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 no. Absolutely. The, uh, the pioneer means somebody who created something that wasn't there beforehand. That's a pioneer. And who does and, that? Um, who does foundation that? of Black Americans and not Puerto Ricans. None of oh, you Herc created did, anything. Herc, Herc didn't do that. Herc didn't do um, that. Well, Herc was getting stuff from Flowers and other people and John Brown. Herc, 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 never, no, Herc, Herc didn't get nothing from Flowers. Flowers yes, is in did. Brooklyn. Herc uh, didn't and, do and, and, Herc, and Herc himself, Herc himself said that he the sound system game, he saw the Brooklyn dudes doing it. He said this with his mouth. He said that on Combat Jack show. And the Brooklyn dudes, if you, and if the you look and you look at look at the interview that is on Mark Skill. Mark Skills did the interview with Cool DJ D, and they asked him all those big sound <clears throat> sound systems in Brooklyn. And he said the foundation of those sound systems come from Jamaica because the people who made Horse those sound crap. systems. What I'll send you the article, brother. I will I'll send you. The I article. got Cool D in the movie. I have I'll Cool D in the, the movie. Article. Then you I call got. Him. I don't need an article. Cool D is in my movie. He I'll said they knew about. Him. They had equipment. They knew about sound systems. They can go down to uh, Manhattan and get the sound system. What the hell they need to go to some damn Jamaican about a sound system for? And he told that's me where not, he got them. He told me where I he said. got the sound systems in Manhattan. Dude, that's they can go down to Manhattan and get the sound. That's what he said. I'm telling you what he told me. Cool DJ. I'm G, telling you what he dudes, said in the article. These dudes, do, why would they have to go to some damn Jamaican for a sound system and they can go right there to Manhattan? Dude? That's not what I said. He said. What you're are you listening. saying? What are you saying? You're, you're not listening. I'm listening. I, what are you asked saying? Him, they asked him about the sound systems in Brooklyn, the big sound system. And he that said. That they've had since the 1960s. But go ahead. And he, and he said that many of the people who built those sound systems and he names the DJs in Brooklyn were from Jamaica and brought that culture from Jamaica. Horse That's crap. what he said. Well, then Horse he's crap. lying. Then he's lying. Horse crap. I'll send cool you the DJ article. Now he's telling the truth in my movie. I don't know what he told y'all in my movie. They he didn't were tell doing me that nothing. On their I read own. this. In fact, I read and it. I want you and in fact Cool Herc said that he got the sound system idea from the foundational Black Americans, the, the Black Americans over in Brooklyn. He saw them doing it. They were doing that already, having the block parties with the big systems. Flowers and those guys were doing that. So that's oh, nothing yeah, yeah, new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were doing that. Uh, yeah. um, Chip and I know. All these guys. 
and their yeah, flyers and their flyers from the early 70s i'm talking about mm -hmm. 72 from mm -hmm. brooklyn with them using the word rap on it and mm -hmm. i got that in the movie sir so they they were doing it in brooklyn and cool dj d is from brooklyn and then he came into the bronx and started doing right. his thing and right, showing right, them right. what the deal was so that existed before sir we, that's why we getting all of this stuff straight i'm not i'm not denying anything you're saying you're, you're not saying anything wrong right now you're not saying anything i don't disagree I don't I, I don't disagree with but right, I'm just saying. telling you what the sources told me well then either D did not include this in your interview or he lied in the article it's one of the two and I'll talk oh, to people are story. misquoted in articles all the time yeah right I, I'm I telling you, you what cool cool DJ D told me in my face that he got okay. sound systems he had equipment that he got from downtown manhattan new york and he told me mm -hmm. the store told me the making model of the mixers that he had the right. speakers right. so they said they've been doing that him and the group fantasia out of brooklyn these were mm -hmm. foundational black mm -hmm. american cats dj flowers mm -hmm. was working two turntables in the early 1970s and that's who grandmaster class got his name from that's where he got the idea of the grandmaster name so a lot of the influences were coming out of brooklyn then it came into the bronx and they were influencing some of the bronx guys too now they don't include right and a lot of them don't include the grandmaster flowers and the pdj jones and the hip-hop story because a lot mm -hmm. of them focus primarily on disco music so right. that's something we we tackle in the movie as well but they were just as influential but the the real influence were foundational black americans and not puerto ricans that's the but, there but, were no but, puerto rican influences what i'm asking you is simple who yes creates something that was not done before. Which DJ does that? It's her. Uh, now what? Like what? What did her create? The merry-go-round. The merry-go-round. That's him. That's that. Nobody did that before him. Grand Wizard Theodore has said this numerous times. Nobody did that before him. Melly Mel has what? said this. Nobody did that before him. So well, the thing is, on. what 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 Hurt did was just play a break beat over and over again. Sure. Sure. That's what he did. Right. There were there were people blending music. I don't say they were mm -hmm. blending the breaks primarily, but a mm -hmm. lot of us were focused on break music at the same or break beats at the same time mm -hmm. in the 1970s. There was a song called The Breakdown. So there's this always been this thing at the break of the music, we start mm -hmm. dancing a little harder. That's something in foundational black American culture. You can see episodes yes. of Soul Train. Sure, sure. When the sure. breakdown of a when the drums come on. We start hitting the floor. That's the foundational Black American culture. You ain't hitting the floor, this. but I get what you're saying. Yeah, uh, you get, no, I get we what were you're yes, saying. yes, we saying. were hitting the floor. No, we, you what do you mean we weren't hitting the floor? We, there's we video the floor. of us hitting the floor in the 1960s, 50s, 40s, but in the 1960s, there's videos of us hitting the floor. What are you talking? Now you ain't about? gonna you ain't gonna try and say that's breaking, are you? Please don't uh, yeah. try to say that's breaking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's the same thing. I'm sure Charlie Rocket. You look at you look you at episodes that. of you look at episodes of Soul Train. You see us hitting the floor, early seventies. You're doing, uh, you're is doing that, is that not breaking? No, you're doing splits and drops. That's not breaking. Dude. You're doing splits and drops. That's what you're doing. Come um, on, dude, they're doing way more than splits and drops on, on the Soul floor. Train. Yes, on Soul Train. They're, they're pop locking, doing splits and and drops, pin drops. And, that's what and it's they're called. doing stuff and they're doing other sweeps on the floor as well they're doing sweeps yes yes they're doing sweeps they're doing helicopters absolutely yes but yes they not, are that's not breaking though bro how, okay those, how those is it just breaking? moves how how because is it not breaking it the foundation and, 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 moves. and some of the b-boys were doing the exact same moves how is that not the same again moves are attached to movements that's not the same it's Boy, not what the kind same of explaining thing. is that what kind of explaining is that Derek? How is that if not you the talk same about the if you talk about the foundational Derek how is that not the same on Soul Train they're doing sweeps l l um, l let me explain let me explain uh, boy the splaining is let, let me explain let me go let ahead let me hear this let me let me hear let this me let me hear this go ahead <laughs> let me, what's the difference Lord so, top rock six step freezes that's breaking oh stop and then you says who says who says who says no 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 says who ask ask Charlie Rock he'll tell you the same thing no he'll tell you the same thing well Charlie Rock also said the Puerto Ricans weren't there so you don't believe him but he also he didn't say the Puerto Ricans weren't there he said there weren't a lot of us no y'all weren't there I have him on tape bro 
Uh, and so I have him on tape too. I know. And he didn't I mean, say y'all there came late. A lot of us. He's in y'all, the trailer, bro. He's saying it in uh, the trailer. I, the trailer you saying put that up, y'all came he's late. Saying y'all were y'all they weren't there like like a lot of them like that. That's what he's saying. But he's and also even when saying, they're saying not a lot of them, they're talking about the ones in the audience. Okay. Because y'all weren't okay. b-boying. Y'all weren't, when he says that there was a few there, that means the ones who were just there watching the jams. It might have mm-hmm. been one or two in the audience, but as far as participating in b-boying, no. Everybody across the board said Puerto Ricans weren't there. And I'm talking but about let's all get, of let, the pioneers. But let's get, but, uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll believe that they said that when I see it. Oh, when you'll I see it. the dot. Oh, yeah. I'll believe that they said that because I have a oh, hard yes, time indeed. believing that they said that. Um, yeah, they said it. They okay. said it. So back to the B-Boy thing. Ask Charlie Rock what the foundation of the B-Boy is. It's top rock. It's the six step. It's the footwork. It's the freezes. That They're not doing that on Soul Train. They're doing certain moves no, that they incorporate. No, that, no, no, no. That. That's not the foundation. That's not the foundation. That's, that's a certain interpretation of B-Boy. But B-Boy, by definition, it's a lot of freestyle moves. It's a lot of unconventional moves that are freestyle moves. You innovate some of the moves as they go along. That's what makes it And unique. that's where you get people, sweeps. And people come up with their own interpretations of it. And they have the burning dance where they incorporate certain things. They do flips. So it's all about being innovative. So there's no set in stone um, foundation of what the, the B-Boy dance is. But what we see in foundational Black American culture is us hitting the floor, us doing some stand-up dances, and then us being on some freestyle shit, hitting the floor, jumping back sure. up and doing some fly. No, no see, doubt. the no thing doubt. is, the your, you Puerto Rican fam, y'all came later, and y'all focus, <laughs> and, you, and, and you focus, and you focus primarily. Let me let me keep it. When's later? When's later? Later meaning late seventies, early eighties. Bro, we're there and, since and, 75. And Come on. The, no, no, uh, no, Come no, no. On, 70 man. and 75, y'all were, y'all were doing the hustle. 75. No, 75, y'all weren't doing 75. anything. No, no, you know, you know, y'all were doing the hustle, dude. And the, y'all started focusing on floor work later because, truth be told, you couldn't really dance on the up rock tip. <laughs> you didn't have the rhythm to dance. Are so you, you would have to. So you, would, you, have to spin on, you would have to spin on the floor for 20 minutes because you couldn't really dance. B-boying was about dancing in rhythm, hitting the floor, doing something fly, then coming back up in rhythm. A lot of you couldn't do that, so we had to hit the floor. And and, and, we didn't do that. No, y'all had to hit the floor and stay on the floor and spin on your back for 20 minutes. Let's keep it above. Spinning on the back came in the 80s, bro. Right, that's what I'm saying. That wasn't the 70s So Right, so y'all had to focus on that. The foundation was from 75, and it's top rock, it's footwork, it's freezes. That's and top rock and, and top rock dances, we've been doing that since the 1890s. That's the chart. It's not, it's not the same thing. It's, it's not, the very, you know it's it. the exact same know thing. It. It's you the know, exact it's same, the same thing. thing. It's the no. Charleston and the Lindsay Hop. All the right? Dance, that's brother, all it the is. Rock dance. The rock the dance. The rock dance is a Frank myth. That's a, that's, a lot. That's, a, that's a myth that y'all didn't created. There's no rock dance that we were influenced by at all. The we rock dance and the Latin from, breakdown. The, the, ain't no Latin breakdown and the, the rock breakdown. dance. Yeah, so the crack rock dance, because you got to be smoking. You got to be smoking crack rock to believe that <laughs> y'all influenced us with some damn rock dance. Give me a break, all right? It's the crack what rock. Instruments, dance. What instruments do you hear in the in the breaks? Uh, the you hear foundational Black American drums. You hear mm-hmm. percussions. That's what you hear in the okay. breaks, and you hear funk. You hear funk being hit on the one. That's yes. what you hear. All Absolutely. breaks, and that's James Brown, and that's foundational Black Absolutely. American. It I, starts I on the that. one. Yeah. We didn't, we weren't getting Latin music because y'all music don't even start on the one. Nobody yeah, the, said the, Latin music to read. All, all right, Latin y'all can't music. mix it up. Uh, the way we, you, didn't we say weren't, Latin we, music. we, 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 we weren't, we weren't, percussions. No, no, Latin percussion is nothing. We weren't shimmying our hips and shit. We weren't doing none of that. Y'all don't have the kind of music that you could break. You didn't these, even sir. use Latin percussion instruments in your big bands. So Sir, that's, that, that's, that's, in, that's inconsequential. We were, it is? Uh, funk breaks funk breaks are based on funk, the funk which is foundation of Black American. James Brown didn't have int- Latin percussions in his bands until. He didn't start out that way until. Where did he get that until what? from? Until he started putting it in. Until Johnny Griggs. And Johnny Griggs played for Fania All-Stars. 
So are you saying that? Are you saying that? Are wait? Are you trying to say that he influenced James Brown? Who? John Griggs is African American. No, I'm. I'm I understand, but but are you trying to say that Latin music influenced James Brown? No, I'm saying that James Brown wanted saying, that man? he wanted that sound. This is what sound? What sound? The, the Latin funk. sound. No he, no, he didn't. What Latin sound did James Brown have? We're talking about James the Latin Brown didn't have no damn Latin sound. What are you talking about, yes, Derek? The, the, the follow rhythm and that ain't no turn it loose. That ain't uh, no, that's Cuban. That's, that's it's, that ain't no Cuban. goddamn Cuban. Yes, it how is. Come, how come no Cuban records sound like that then? It's the follow rhythm, bro. Cuban, what Cuban, Cuban records sound like? What Cuban record sounds like? Give it up, turn it loose. <laughs> no, that's no, that's not what we're talking. No, 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 no. If the, it's Cuban, no, no, the... no. If it's Cuban, what Cuban record sound like? Give it up, turn it loose, or anything close. I, I didn't close. say it was Cuban. All right, then. then it, it don't make no sense, then. I'm right? Saying it don't the make rhythm. sense. I'm saying don't the no, rhythm, rhythm nothing. What, there are no rhythm. Cuban records that sound like James Brown records, sir. No, there are no, no Cuban no, no, funk no, records. No. No. What are you talking about? You're just saying stuff. There are there are Latin funk records, so don't. don't no, no, there. no. That came later. That came later. The, them imitating foundation of uh, Black American artists. J- Name Joe the Cuban Baton. records. What Cuban records sound like funk records coming out of the '60s? Nobody's saying that. Nobody. You're, you're, none. You're, you're so how, me, are gonna, no, how, how are you going to? How how are you going to influence? No, no, no. Then how are you going to influence a music genre that you don't have? I'm not saying that. You're, you're, okay. You're, you're okay. 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 All that. right. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Good Lord. All right, guys. I'm in Fiji. Let me go back to the beach. I'm, I'm sick of hearing this horse shit. Uh, all right. All right. Peace to Anyway, me. guys, y'all have at it. Y'all have at it. I'm about to go eat hey, me some... Um, I'm, I'm about to I'm about to eat me some um, tarot bread right oh, now. Yeah. I'm t- I'm- Element of hip-hop, it was, it, was, it, was, it was 50-50, bro. If you look at the pictures, just go see the pictures. Mm-hmm. You'll see it. Yeah, I had no idea that after that, um, Busta Rhymes would also show his ass and share the same sentiment. Jamaicans invented really hip hop. This whole hip hop shit was birthed from Jamaica. Like, Kool Herc is a Jamaican nigga. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The whole concept of having big ass. Yeah, Kool Herc, born and raised in the U.S. of A. He's a Jamaican nigga. Kool Herc, whose main inspiration was James Brown. I was always imitating James Brown. Yeah. Always, always. And that kind of stuck. So what we doing? And as far as trying to make the American people them dance to the music, I, is, I start to say that I could use their rhythm bass instead of using Jamaican rhythm instead bass. Instead of using Jamaican rhythm bass. So he didn't even use the Jamaican rhythm bass from his homeland. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But Busta wants to big up Big Herc um, or Cool Herc as some kind of... Um, evidence that jamaicans started hip-hop i mean i don't understand it i don't understand it and now we got the mexicans also being extremely disrespectful let me put a couple things in perspective for you respect the black culture but i don't got a record for you and hip-hop ain't a black thing i got a lesson for you Latino. The Mexican got a the Mexican that is fleeing at alarming rates. Three hundred thousand illegal immigrants came through the border just last month. The Mexican is gonna try to say that hip hop isn't a black thing. Oh my God, it's getting crazy. It's getting real, real crazy out here. And you know it's funny because I found some old footage of Big Pun in the streets trying to big up, you know, black and brown relations, and as it relates to hip hop and blase, blase, blase. And he had a very small group of Latinos coming out to show their support for hip hop. I mean, I think this clip that I'm about to play is a visual representation of how minuscule the the uh, impact was or, or, or even the members of the audience were as it pertains to them being of Latino descent. It's important because we were here since day one. It's obvious answer, you know what I'm saying? Day one, he's good. You know, it's beautiful. You know, there's more. There's even more than this right here. I'm just glad. I ain't got like ten homeboys you know, outside. You know what I mean? But it's important, especially because it's too cold to top of that. And we're showing. We're not only showing. <laughs> When Big Pun wants to show out the the Latin um, <laughs> the Latin audience within the commu- uh, the hip hop community, he got about 10, 12 homies in the audience. And guys, I, I think that is a visual representation of the impact that they had <laughs> within hip hop. I mean, a very eensy weensy eensy weensy little portion within the grand scheme of things, y'all. Come on. Let's go, y'all. Let's go. It's important because we were here since day one. It's an obvious answer, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, say it's beautiful. You know, there's more. There's even more than this right here. I'm just glad that we get this money together, you know what I mean? But it's important, especially because it's too cold to top of that. And we're showing, we're not only showing Latino, um,
Damn, and he said he's proud. He's glad that he can even get that many together. Okay, but they created it, y'all. They created it. Y'all, I never thought this was something that was even up for debate.